wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit tonight while it was on my mind. We're northbound here at 48 Mile Point on the lower Mississippi River. And uh, I want to talk to you tonight about uh, tears in your bottle. And most of us have heard, if you are been a Christian any length of time, you have heard sermons on tears in the bottles, how they gathered them up, but I ran across a little something in studying here uh, recently, and hopefully this will be a blessing to you, but uh, when in, in the old days, in the Bible days, One thing, the Romans would take when a loved one would die, they would take and gather the tears as a memorial and put them in a little bottle and place them on the casket of the deceased. Well, the tears, if the bottle had a lot of tears, represented how much you love them. Pretty simple. A few tears, not much love. A lot of tears, a lot of love. So your, your bottle of tears was a testimony as to how much you loved your lost loved one. Now, in the Old Testament, in the year of Jubilee, when a man was released from all his obligations to his master if he was a slave, then he was had the opportunity to be set free. And stay with me now. And so if he had a good master and he loved his master, then he would take and lay his head against the doorpost of the master's house and they would take a spike, an awl, a nail, and they would drive it through his ear and nail him to the doorpost of his master's house. In doing that, when they turn him loose, when they would see him on the street and they would see the hole and they would see the marking, the scars on his ear, without saying anything, that gave them or they, that led them to believe and to understand that that man had a good master and that that man loved his master and that that man, man gave up his life for his master and to stay a slave and to stay in his master's house and he could have been free and he could have regained all his former life. But because he loved his master and was willing to be nailed to the doorpost and be permanently marked, then that mark said all kind of things about that man his commitment, his dedication, his love. And so that bottle of tears, if there wasn't very many tears in the bottle, you didn't have to say very much because the tears said it all. Hallelujah. A lot of tears, a lot of love. Little tears, little love. 
Then another thing they did, this is very awesome. Very, very powerful. They, when the men would go to war, the women would take their bottles and they would weep and gather their tears. The same analogy. The more tears, the more love. And they didn't know when their man was coming back from war. And the tears in that bottle represented the love that those women had for their men. And they would present that bottle of tears to the warrior when he came home. Few tears, little love. Lots of tears, lots of love. The shame of a woman that when her man came home and the Gerald Majors One lesson, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, the shame of the women that when their husbands or their men came home, that they didn't have very many tears to present to their man, which was a testimony against them that, that their love have waned. They may have filled the bottle in the beginning, but over time, their fervency, their expectancy, their love began to fade. And as their love faded, the tears in the bottle faded. The ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. They had oil. There was a few tears. They had oil, but it was a testimony against those that did not have enough. But those that were conscious, those that kept their lamps full and burning. They, uh, they were ready when the bridegroom came. And they only had enough, but I can't give you my tears. And you can try to deceive the bridegroom or you can try to deceive your warrior man by supplementing tears with water or liquid of some kind but if he puts it to the test the saltiness will be gone and he'll quickly realize that they're not real tears of joy Tears of sorrow, tears of expectation, tears of preparation for the warrior husband, warrior man, warrior lover to come home. And so they try to take brass and make it gold and supplement the gospel with another gospel and supplement the truth with a half truth. Give us all in our lamps and keep it burning. Let us, as the day comes to a close and we know 
that we're headed into the night hours. We have time to fill our lamps. We have time to prepare for the evening so that we'll be able to make it through the night and be able to replenish our oil the next morning. But don't let us get caught if the bridegroom comes in the night and we don't have oil in our lamps. And we, we, it, it shows neglect. It shows a lack of love, a lack of expectancy, a lack of uh, commitment. Because if we really believed the bridegroom could come at any time, if we believed our warrior lover, if we were a woman, was coming at any given time and had faith that God was going to take care of him and God was going to bring him back home, then those women would continually pray and continually cry and continually replenish the tears in that bottle so that they would be able with pride and with joy and unashamed be able to take their bottle when their warrior man came in and present it to him as evidence of their love and their commitment and their continuation in their relationship and the expectancy that he could come at any given time and their tears never ceased. Their tears ran with the spirit of Jeremiah like a river and they gathered those tears every day that the bottle would stay full and the bottle would be a testimony and they didn't try to supplement the tears with a false doctrine or supplement the tears with water or wine or some other liquid but the tears was genuine salty hallelujah real tears that represented their commitment to that man that they saw leave and walk away and this same Jesus that you see go in the clouds, 500 men stood there and looked up and gazed as Jesus disappeared into the clouds. And the angels appeared and said, This same Jesus that you see leave shall come again in like manner. And so our tears, our all, our endurance, our efforts, our business about the Father's business is collected up and gathered up and presented to the Lord when He comes back. And we're not ashamed and his appearing. <clears throat> and so you see the significance of tears in the bottle and the need for them to be replenished with real tears that are now Unless you taste the tears, you could be deceived by the fullness of the bottle and the genuineness of the liquid in the bottle. It would seem that the bottle is full of tears, but unless you taste and the Bible says to taste and see that the Lord is good. And unless you taste the tears, then you have to put them to the test so that you know that what you're seeing in that bottle is the real thing, is the genuine. Wolves in sheep's clothing. 
whited sepulchers full of dead man's bones, half truths, and another way. Put the tears in the bottle and don't be afraid if they are put to the test, the taste test. And so may we all keep oil in our lamps, tears in our bottles, busyness in our heart for the Lord, let us labor, and our labor is not in vain, and let us labor and give ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ in fervency and truthfulness and heartfelt commitment and love. And if you're not doing that, you've got opportunity while it's yet day. Because the Bible tells me to work while it's yet day, for the night cometh when no man can work. You have time right now to renew your love and your commitment and put tears in your bottle and all in your lap if you'll do it. If you will. And so I leave you with this tonight. Tears in the bottle. The test of time and the test of taste and the genuine in Jesus name Amen